As the War Widows New South Wales Chair and previous Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Veteran Affairs for New South Wales and ACT, you've been involved in the ex-service community for almost 20 years. We've seen women play an immensely yet largely unrecognised role in the veteran support system. How do you think women can be better supported and recognised? First of all, we've got to recognise that women have been the backbone of the veteran community. They are the uh, supporters of many of our veterans and largely that has gone unrecognised. The Australian War Widows New South Wales uh, is putting together and putting in place a program that will support and continue to support widows, but also women and families. For the first time, we now have an organisation that is solely focused on women and their families. We need to profile more women in the mainstream media. Women like Brie Till, Jess Taylor, Joe Turner, Lynn Boyd. Now they've all had their challenges, but one they've also shown is resilience. And we need to make sure we celebrate and recognise them. Women have also played a very strong role in caring. Now the ADF nor DVA actually recognise or understand the role that women play uh, in this space. There's no policy or programs that focus on this critical role. We need to advocate for women of all ages who are in the roles of carers. The other group, of course, that's largely uh, unsupported are children. Children have been forgotten uh, and both governments uh, on any persuasion has not recognised uh, the support that's required for children of our veterans. Our strategic plan at the Australian War Widows New South Wales uh, has a very strong focus on advocating and making sure programs are in place to support women and their families. And if we don't have those programs, making sure strong links are with other providers. What role can veteran community organisations such as War Widows New South Wales play in supporting both serving and civilian women into the future? Just touched on a couple of those areas. One was carers. I think it's, it is and largely uh, not understood, nor um, a focus of uh, the ADF or DBA. Uh, if the role of carers comes up, they tend to want to, to refer us to another agency such as social services. But I don't believe those agencies really have a good understanding the role of supporting or caring for a veteran. The other group, of course, I talked about was children. They're largely unforgotten, particularly where you've got children whose um, veteran parent may be suffering from PTSD. They may not have the necessarily um, understanding of what's going on with mum or dad. And we need to make sure those children are supported and we put in place some programs. The other area, of course, I think that we need to support women is to retrain a lot of these women. A lot of these women have moved around multiple um, states supporting their veteran partner uh, in their career, but when they're no longer there or the veteran can no longer work in the ADU, uh, these women are then uh, faced with being the main breadwinner uh, and there are no support programs to retrain these women. So we need to make sure we put in place support programs, but also retraining some of these widows uh, or um, wives or partners of veterans so to ensure that that family have the necessary resources into the future. What advice have you had to manage as a woman and a leader within the defence and veteran sector? An interesting uh, journey over the last uh, many years. Um, you've basically got a sector, both at the ADF level, but also at the ex-service community, that is male dominated. So when you put um, women into that space, um, there can be some bias. I can't recall any significant examples um, however I did, I would certainly call it out, uh, but in a gentle, non-aggressive way. I've always made sure that women are involved in the decisions, certainly at a government level. I've also needed to push women forward um, so that they become um, uh, active within the space. Um, we'll have less bias if we have more women uh, in those spaces. We are blessed with a voice and we need women to be supported in using their voices, not only for themselves, but also for the voiceless. Uh, in these situations, I always tend to think, um, now, is this about me or is it about an issue? Um, and if it's about an issue, then I'll focus on that issue rather than uh, me as an individual. I think too often uh, we see women telling their stories, 
But my question is always, do we actually use those stories collectively to drive reform? I'm very comfortable at here at the Australian War with those New South Wales. Um, we've got a very strong history of supporting women and we'll continue to do that into the future and make sure their voices are heard.